Hello all and welcome to this new video tutorial. In case you would like to configure the quality ID settings when making outbound calls, I would suggest to watch this video as we're going to walk through the UCM interface manipulating the caller ID appropriately when making outbound calls. I hope you guys found this useful and most important of all, enjoy. When configuring the caller ID to use when making calls, we must understand the concept behind DID and DOD. DID, or Dark Inward Dial, is a virtual number of a SIP or ISDN trunk, also known as DID number. A single trunk can have multiple DID numbers. These numbers are used for outside callers to contact specific destinations directly through a single trunk. On the other hand, DOD, or Dark Outward Dial, is a virtual number that is displayed to outside destinations when one or more extensions are linked to it and make outgoing calls. It is a way to help external destinations to identify which extensions are making calls from a company. Having understood what is DID and DOD, we must now know how to configure them and where we can do it. For DID settings, we have to configure the DID from the inbound routes, since this configuration is entirely intended for receiving calls. This configuration is carried out from the UCM web interface by logging in with administrator credentials, then we go to extension trunk, inbound routes, and from this section, we will be able to add or edit inbound routes. For this configuration, it is enough to place a pattern rule. This pattern will allow us to route calls to specific destinations when the call is directed to a DID that matches this pattern. The format of the pattern can be found in its tooltip. We need to select the trunk this inbound route will be used for, and a default destination must be configured so that the call can be routed to it. These are the mandatory settings for the inbound routes to start to work. Now, for DOD, which is the main topic of this video, you should be noted that there is a priority level when configuring the caller ID for outgoing calls, and this is compromised of the extension number as the lowest. This is the caller ID shown when making calls between extensions and through pure trunks, without any other additional caller ID settings, which we will mention next. The second one is the global outbound caller ID. And this is the global caller ID that is displayed when outbound calls are made through any type of zip trunk without additional or higher priority caller ID settings. This option can be found in PBX settings, general settings. The third in the priority is the registered trunk username. This when keep trunk caller ID option is disabled. I will explain about this option later in the priority tree. This is the caller ID that is displayed when making calls over registration trunks without any additional caller ID settings. It is a user ID the registered trunk uses in order to register the account from your VoIP service provider. The four in the priority is the trunk caller ID. This caller ID is used for outgoing calls from zip trunks or digital trunks only, when no other higher privileged caller ID option is configured. The fifth in the priority is extension caller ID. You will have the ability to configure a specific caller ID for advanced calls from extensions. This will override the extension number and lower privileged caller ID rules. This configuration can be found in the basic settings of the extension. The sixth in the priority is the outbound caller ID. In order to make outbound calls, it is necessary to configure outbound routes where the outbound call destination pattern and the trunk to be used are configured. Based on this premise, we can configure a specific caller ID to be sent only when we call numbers that match this dialing pattern. This is convenient in special configurations. The seventh in the priority list is the DOD caller ID and the one this video is intended for. The DOD, as mentioned before, will help us to use one of the virtual numbers of the SIP or ISDN trunk when the selected number of extensions are linked to that virtual number. This means that every time those extensions call through this trunk, the DOD links to those extensions will be used, overriding rules with lower privilege. This setting can be found in extension trunk, then web trunk or digital trunk, and click on the DOD icon. Then we add a new DOD, and we need to configure the DOD number, which will be the virtual number. Then we configure the DOD name, which will be the caller ID name for that virtual number. And we need to select the extensions that are going to use that virtual number. The eighth in the priority is strong caller ID when keep trunk caller ID is enabled. This setting helps to keep the registration trunk username or the caller ID configured on zip trunks or digital trunks over the previous mentioned caller ID settings. It will help us to override lower privilege caller ID options. The ninth in the priority list is the inbound call caller ID. How is that? Well, 
when we receive a call from the trunk and that call is forwarded or transferred to another external number, the UCM will keep the caller's caller ID as the originating caller ID for the new call. This option helps the final destinations of the call to know who called them for callback purposes. This feature is available when the option Keep Original Caller ID found in the basic settings of the SIP register trunk is enabled and the call is coming from another trunk. And the last in the priority but not the less is the From User option, only available for registered trunks. When we set up SIP register trunks, we will have the ability to configure the username in order to register the SIP register trunk and the From User, which is a field that will override the username when making calls. This option helps the UCM to place a caller ID with the maximum priority. The UCM will always use this option when configured over the previous mentioned caller ID options. Good, we finally reviewed the priority tree of the caller ID settings when making outbound calls from the UCM series. All the 10 options listed correspond to a specific usage for different deployment situations. For example, the outbound caller ID allow users to always use the virtual number when they match a specific outbound route with that setting configured or the DOD option allow users to always use the virtual number when that zip trunk or digital trunk has that DOD configured and linked to those extensions, and the keep original caller ID allow the destinations of the call to know what is the origin of the call when that call is forward or transferred. If looking to troubleshoot from where could we configure a caller ID option that causes external destinations to display an invalid caller ID, please check one by one in the priority list from the highest to the lowest where could be configured and you will find it, unless the SIP service provider overwrites the caller ID that UCM sends when making calls. In general, it could be possible that the SIP service provider could change, mask, or override the caller ID sent by the UCM with one that can be configurable from their SIP account options or might not be configurable at all, and that will depend on the SIP service provider side, and for that we recommend to reach them for more indications. And this was all for today's video tutorial. I hope you guys found it useful in understanding the priority of the caller ID settings in our UCM series. And if you have any questions related to this topic, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section as we will try to reach an answer properly. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.